So let's try another NMR problem. Here we're given both proton and carbon 13 NMR and the molecular formula is C6H10O. So again, just like in part one, let's just observe the spectra and cross-reference with the molecular formula. So we look at the carbon 13 spectra and we observe six signals and we have six carbons. So no equivalent carbons in this molecule. And if we look at proton NMR, it appears that the highest intensity signal is the 3H singlet here, but of course it's 3H, it's probably a methyl. So if I just scan A through E, it doesn't look like we have any integration of signals. So no integration, no equivalent carbons. So now we should calculate DU and C, our functional groups right after. Like in part one, because we're only dealing with carbons, hydrogens, and most importantly oxygen, oxygen isn't accounted for in DU. So with a DU of 2, it's likely we have two pi bonds here because it doesn't seem like we have an alkyne and it doesn't look like we have a benzene ring either. We have complex splitting, so that's evidence for an alkene. And if we look right here at this peak, it's very characteristic of a carbonyl, close to 200 parts per million. This time the alkene is probably internal because the signals are between 6 and 7 parts per million. We observe that here, internal alkenes have higher chemical shifts between 5.2 to 5.7. But in this case, because we have oxygen in our compound, it's very likely the alkene is very near to electronegative atoms. In other words, very close to the carbonyl, or as close as possible, because this signal is very close to 7 whereas the upper range here is 6.5. Now, if this compound included an aldehyde, we would see a chemical shift close to 10. However, because we don't see that, it's very likely this is a ketone. So now let's try to decipher all the signals A through E, because eventually we do need to label the location of each of them. So signal A is a triplet 3H, so that's a methyl group. Signal B is a 2H quintet, meaning we have four proton neighbors. And because of its low frequency, it's probably very close to the methyl. So I can begin piecing together my structure already. If we have a CH2 group next to four protons, one of them is very likely to be the methyl. On the other side, we must have a C H in total four protons which are adjacent to these two. Signal C is further evidence of a ketone because it's a singlet peak close to 2.3 to 2.2 parts per million. That could be cross-referenced right here with a chemical shift of 2.1 to 2.6. These are protons that are adjacent to carbonyls. So this compound is very likely a methyl ketone a methyl group being one of these R groups. Now let's take a look at the alkene signals D and E. In signal D we have a 1H doublet and signal E we have 1H doublet of triplet. Doublet of triplet would mean on one side we have one proton neighbor and on the other side we have a CH2 group. So if we pretend we have an alkene, this hydrogen here that we're calling signal E should have one proton neighbor to the right, for example, and two to the left. So that's where this doublet of triplet comes from. The hydrogen here has an adjacent alkene hydrogen here that will split this signal into a doublet. And towards the left, we have two supposed protons forming a triplet. So a doublet of triplet is a result of these three adjacent hydrogen. Now signal D is a 1H doublet so if we call this the doublet of triplet, this must be the doublet. And it only has one neighbor towards the left here, this adjacent proton in turquoise. That means to the right, there must be a carbon that does not bear any protons whatsoever. The only possibility in this case is the carbonyl carbon. Because the carbonyl carbon is involved in a pi system, in a pi bond, it does not bear any hydrogens. We said here that the ketone is probably a methylated ketone because of the 3H singlet. So most probably, directly adjacent to the alkene, we have the carbonyl. 
Now we can prove that in several ways. For one, we have the alkene between 6 and 7 parts per million. That's indicative of an internal alkene near electronegative atoms. Because one of our signals is close to 7, the alkene is probably as close as possible to the ketone, forming the conjugated product. What that means is if I have a ketone here, for example, and I put in my methyl group, which is this 3H singlet, the alkene must be as close to the ketone as possible, like we were saying. So if I draw in an arbitrary carbon chain right here, there's no way the double bond can go here because carbon does not expand its octet. That means the alkene must go right here between the alpha and beta carbons, which are relative to the carbonyl carbon. So in conclusion, signals D and E validate previous signals that we analyzed. We said that there's a CH2 directly adjacent to the alkene and that would be signal B here, which contributes to the triplet splitting. We said that to the right of this alkene carbon, there must be a carbonyl carbon that does not bear any protons. Let's try to piece together the structure. We have a carbonyl, specifically a ketone, so let's draw that in first. The 3H singlet is the methyl directly attached to the ketone. Let's draw that in too. Now because the alkene is very high in frequency, close to 7 parts per million, it must be as close as possible to the carbonyl oxygen. The only possibility there is to have it between the alpha and beta carbons. Now we have four carbons, two are remaining to satisfy the molecular formula. We look towards signals A and B then, since C, D, and E are covered. Signal A was a methyl group, lowest in frequency, so it's probably terminal in this compound. Signal B was the adjacent methylene group, the CH2 group, which is right here. So collectively, A and B are an ethyl group, which is exactly what we're missing here. So let's make sure we did this right. Signal C is a 3H singlet, right here. No adjacent hydrogens. Signals A and B are the ethyl group, 3H triplet, right here. 2H quintet, okay, four hydrogen neighbors. Signal D, 1H doublet, that would be right here. And signal E, doublet of triplet, split by the trans partner, that would be a doublet, just like we observed here. And towards the left, by the CH2 group, that would split it into a triplet. So this would be our final answer.